The Steam Deck has given Reggie opportunity to play games he bought years ago but never got round to loading up. One of those is Mad Max, an open world game that received, dare I say, a lukewarm reception in the press. And yet, after playing it for the first time, I started to wonder, is this the most underrated open world game of recent times? So grab yourself a little cocktail and a little beer and let's have a little chat. Now straight up, Mad Max does have its issues and it's certainly not better than a Red Dead Redemption or Grand Theft Auto in terms of best sandbox. God, no people, I'm not a bloody fool, but it does deserve a far greater level of respect than it received. And I do think in the current world of mediocre games we find ourselves in these days, when you go back to these so-called lesser rated games, you discover that just how harshly they were treated and how much better they actually are and what they actually offer to us lovely players. So in Mad Max, much like the films, you play Max, a modern day Nancy Pelosi, where you go about on your travels pissing off a load of people without a care in the world. The difference here, of course, is that the world you traverse in has already been nuked to oblivion, and so it's very much a Putin style wasteland where all that remains is a barren landscape, a load of scrap metal, and about as much water as you'd find on Mars. Lovely stuff it is. Now, in Mad Max, there are three characters to contend with. There is, of course, you. There is the little sidekick called Chum Bucket, or as I've nicknamed him, Cum Bucket, and indeed, your car. Yes, people, your car is arguably the main protagonist in this game, and it's going to be your main mode of transport through the sandy landscape. You see, as you go about the gaff, Cum Bucket will be in the back seat as he is a master mechanic who's able to fix and upgrade your car on your travels. And the story, a weak one, I will add, is very much focused early on about upgrading that car wherever possible. But the joy of doing so is really what drives this game home because the way you can take your rusty scrap heap and turn it into something that is fearful is bloody good fun. It very much reminds me of the mini metro that I owned as a lad when I used to roam around the streets of Essex picking up all the totty. The thing about your car in Mad Max is the sheer options available to you as you have multiple upgrade paths to unlock for just one area. For example, there are five or six options just for your tires to help increase traction. But then again, you also have five or six options just for the rims of the tires to help grind into other cars. And the map has so many little side missions to help you get the very best items that you'll find yourself hunting around everywhere. Just like the British used to do when they'd hunt around around everyone else's prized artifacts. I, for one, emptied a district of its entirety of all possible missions and events just so I could max out my little harpoon. It probably took me around two hours of playing to do so, but the harpoon now allows me to rip enemy cars apart like a knife through butter, and it's a very rewarding part of the game. And that's just it, people. Yes, the story is weak. Yes, there's issues with the camera when trying to fight off a load of riffraff. And yes, the game can feel a bit grindy. And overall, I have to say the pacing is off. It takes a few hours really for the game to get moving and grooving. But, 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 people, the gameplay, the gameplay is superb. And it's got that rewarding feedback that pushes you to take just one more mission in the hope of upgrading your car for your little mate, Come back it. Speaking of come back it, he sits in the back of your car and provides much humour in the form of his commentary to his surroundings. And as mentioned, as a trusty mechanic, when you take serious damage to your car, he'll be the one that can get out and fix it. But to do so, you have to exit your vehicle, which leaves you vulnerable to attack. Which brings me to the next point, people, in that the game is challenging but certainly not difficult. Yes, you will die, but not out of frustration or because the game has f***ed you over, because instead it's you have tried something that's too big for your level and you've got a bit billy big bollocks for it. It's like you're the Jake Paul or MMA, where you know at any point you're gonna get slapped proper hard. So instead, you'll go about the gaff and get more upgrades for your character before trying again, and then you'll be good as gold. Now I've mentioned the map in terms of the plentiful missions and side missions. You can roam about and pull down sniper towers or scarecrows and whatnot, but the real star here are the camps. 
these metal chunks of the landscape usually house a strong boss and multiple enemies that you can take on foot and this is where the combat really comes into play it looks good even if at times it's a little rigid with the animations as you warp from person to person but it plays like Batman with all the counter moves and reversals thrown in throughout and overall it just feels satisfying. What I like here is that unlike other games such as the Far Cry camps where all you do really is just remove enemies to complete them, here they're giving you additional optional choices such as finding a relic before Putin went mental on us or finding little insignias or indeed finding scrap. Scrap is in fact the currency of Mad Max, it's required for any type of upgrade and is a precious commodity for come bucket. The camps likewise are almost like little mazes with little cracks waiting to be explored, that's what she said. And once complete you'll get a message to say the district you're in has a reduced threat level. The higher the threat, the more enemies, the lower the threat, the less enemies. But more importantly more vehicle upgrades available that's because in each major district there is a stronghold for you to ally with which acts like a mini base for you and also you can upgrade this base too which can help you on your travels such as finding key project parts out in Putin's little wasteland and so the point Reggie is making all of this people is just how much there is to do all with the purpose of ultimately upgrading your vehicle in some way or form and it's extremely addictive. Now graphically it's a strange one because it looks magnificent but then in saying that it should as it's really just a plain desert for most of the time. Well not so fast there Cockney kids because the artists have super powered this with so many little wonderful touches along the way especially when played on Mac settings which in this day and age most computers should be able to do. You'll see little drips of flame come from the back of your exhaust, little sand tracks and footprints as you go about the place, dust in the distance from faraway cars as they speed across the horizon, little dust clouds and indeed huge f**k off storms that decimate your visibility and are dangerous to be out in the wild where shelter is then needed. What I particularly like is the love of the skybox itself. You see, the cloud and sunrises do look superb with a fantastic colour palette dripping over Putin's world. And this is down, I think, to the very clever choice of the camera angle. Generally speaking, it sits behind the car at where almost, I don't know, 40%, 50% of the screen is taken up by the horizon as you would expect given it's a barren wasteland and so the beauty really is in that sky and how it juxtaposes against the sand below. Now yes it does look a bit samey after a while and you'll be driving a load of course but given the context and feel of Mad Max movies I think it's a magnificent and faithful recreation. Speaking of the movies they are famous for their practical effects where cars explode in real time and chunks of metal get pulled off vehicles. Well here is no different where car battles feel incredibly punchy and metal pulls away as your harpoon tears a vehicle to shreds and the resulting explosions look superb. As mentioned I played this on the Steam Deck at max settings and it ran faultlessly when I set it to a locked 50 frames per second. If you have a Steam Deck and haven't played Mad Max then bloody hell people spend the five dollars or so when it goes on sale and treat yourself Obviously, for this review, I recorded everything from my main wank station in glorious 4K for you all to observe. But all in all, it's a wonderful little graphical affair. Sound is next, and again, really, it's rather good, boys and girls. You see, the voice acting is very fitting. As mentioned, Cumbucket is the star of the show with all these little voiceovers throughout. Enemies and indeed allies sound mentally lost, which further adds to that dystopian feeling. The car sounds solid, and the impact of crashes is very satisfying. Explosions and bullets rock and rumble the world, and the storms that approach with the wind whipping past your ear sound great. The script isn't perfect, to be honest, and quite weak, but I don't think it's a game you play for story anyway. The musical score I think is brilliant, in particular when you go underground it almost feels like a horror game as you hear in the distance some deranged little twat waiting to come out and scare you and the music gives you that eerie little beat of impending doom. Lovely stuff it is. Generally speaking I can't really fault what they've created here. 
So with everything in mind, the Cockney Gamer Gang is giving Mad Max a score of 8 out of 10. And let's make that a solid 8, shall we? I think the criticisms of Mad Max are justified. I've noted them in the review. But overall, as one big package, it's a fantastic one. It's a brilliant open world game that even 7 years later holds up incredibly well. Now Mad Max released around some big hitters at the time so maybe it got lost in the fold but do treat yourself to this one people especially as it goes on sale regularly because for Reggie it's one of the most underrated games of the last generation. With that you have a lovely week. Treat yourself to a beer or three. Reggie out.